I'd like to welcome all of you here for our midweek Latin service. It's the final one at St. Paul Lutheran Church here in Beatrice, Nebraska. The theme for our series throughout the season of Lent was Passionate About the Passion. And today's theme is specifically, God Passionately Sends Us. So as we begin our service, we begin it as we always do, by remembering who we are as God's children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We also remember that as we are His children, we are still sinful, and need to confess our sins. So, beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the, unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let us take this moment to silently reflect on our sins and recognize our need for forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. For I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us a new and contrite hearts, that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up, after he had given command through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering for many proofs, appearing to them during forty days, and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father which he said, you, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, he asked them, Lord, will you now at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking up, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel lesson, according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now let's take this opportunity to confess our faith 
in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God passionately sends us. Throughout the whole series, I talked about the word passion. And the word passion, uh, two definitions in the dictionary, the passion being the death of Jesus Christ on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven. And another definition is the emotional aspect of, of having uh, uh, this intense feeling of love or devotion. Now, as we think about that, let's look at this reading, especially the one that was from the book of Acts. And uh, just to let you know, we hear that book is called Acts. That's actually the short name for it. It's Acts of the Apostles. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But actually, the Acts of the Apostles is part two of books that were written by Luke. The first one was the Gospel of Luke. And at the end of that, you see Jesus ascended to heaven. And then you have the first part of the book of Acts, which is Jesus ascending into heaven. And it gives a couple different accounts of that. The Gospel lesson... Uh, which is the Great Commission, which you may have heard before. Uh, it's, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. It doesn't specifically say that that was done when Jesus ascended into heaven, but it sure seems to fit that the command that Jesus gave us before he returns to heaven is to go and make disciples, to tell people about what he has done. In Acts, if you were to look at that reading closely, uh, first of all, it says that as they brought him out, as he brought the disciples out, he says some still doubted. Uh, and they asked him a question, are you now going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Which means the disciples still didn't completely get it. Now we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But Jesus just keeps on rolling right along. He says, I'm going to send you the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says, you're going to receive that gift, and that was going to be that gift that was given on the day of Pentecost, as they have the power, as they have the, the uh, passion, as it were, to go out and tell people about Jesus. Now in Acts, he says this as a statement of fact. He says, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. He does not say... Uh, if you don't mind, would you please be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth? No. He says it as a matter of fact. To these disciples, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Do you know the difference between a disciple versus an apostle? A lot of times they are used interchangeably and uh, and incorrectly so as it is, uh, it's referring to mostly the same people. Of course, not all the 12 disciples became apostles. You might have heard what happened to Judas and the assignment that was then given to Matthias. Uh, but the disciples and apostles are actually two different roles. 
The role of a disciple is one that we should all have, which is to be a student, to learn from Jesus as he continues to desire to teach us. He teaches us through his word. He teaches us through the opportunities we have to grow in our faith with our actions, with our studies, with prayer, with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, as a disciple, we continue to grow. But an apostle would actually be similar to what would be considered as an ambassador, which, as it is, the Bible says we're also ambassadors of Christ, uh, showing his, uh, his work to a world that needs to hear. So, an apostle is one who is sent. When Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have commanded you, who is he asking to do this? Is it just those who were gathered around when he ascended into heaven? which could have and probably was more than just simply the 11 that remained of the disciples? Or is that message one that transcends time and is also speaking to us? Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I've commanded you. The truth is, is, When he speaks those words, he speaks it to us. How can we have passion about something that sometimes we feel rather rather ill-equipped to carry out? Even I myself feel ill-equipped in many situations to carry out what I think God wants me to do. But what's interesting is he gives numerous things throughout Scripture. One of the things he says is that when you're brought before the courts, when you're brought before the Sanhedrin, when you're brought in front of somebody and you're worried about what you're going to say, he says, don't. (laughs) Fear not. I will give you the words to say, and I will give you the Holy Spirit. The truth is, is I've experienced a number of different times where Words come out of my mouth that I have no idea where they came from. And it's God giving His Spirit so that we can then share His Word to somebody who at this particular moment in time needs to hear it. He tells them, you are going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. I said I'd get back to it. They, some doubted. Some confused what Jesus was asking them to do or what he came to this earth to do. And so they didn't have all the answers. If you ever feel as if you don't have all the answers and that you're going to get out there as you're sharing God's word and love with people and you're not going to know what to say, join the club. That same thing has happened ever since Jesus gave us his church, and gave us his Holy Spirit. Because people, as we are in this sinful world, as as we look at our own uh, shortcomings, as we look at our own inability to be able to do things, we question, how can we do this great thing that God has called us to do? And we can't. (laughs) The thing is, is we would not be able to do those things on our own nor does God expect us us to do those things on our own. Because he fully plans on giving us what is needed when it is needed. The point is this, and I'm uh, sorry to say that it could have probably been said much quicker than this, God sends you. That's it. As God's child... God sends you. God wants you to tell people. God wants you to witness what he has done in your life. God does not want you to keep quiet. 
God does not want you to look around and see people who are lost and turn a blind eye. God does not want you to see people in need and walk by on the other side of the street. God does not want you to avoid situations where you might talk about God or where you might be challenged about your faith. God sends you. And if God sends you, then he will then give you the strength to be able to withstand in those circumstances and share his love. Because as it is, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about what we're able to muster up on our own. It's about the love of God and the passion that he showed for us when he gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we can be forever with him in heaven as he has forgiven our sins and given us everlasting life. As a Lenten series go, it moves us closer to the celebration of Jesus giving his life on Good Friday and destroying the power of death on Easter. The message that rings true, whether it be in a week and a half and two weeks, or whether it be every single day of our life when we remember that we've been rescued from death. I'll tell you something else, and this is timely for this service. People are wondering what's going to happen with Easter. Are we going to be able to celebrate it together? Are we going to be able to do the things that traditionally we've done on Easter? I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm not sure what's going to be done, but I know this. Easter is not about one day we set aside each year, but it's about every day of our life that we remember that we were once dead and now are alive in Christ, that he has given us victory that cannot be taken away. Another thing that's uh, interesting to know is this. Do you realize that in the early church, they didn't celebrate a day of Easter? But every time they gathered together to worship on Sunday, they celebrated Easter. When they walked down the streets and saw a brother or sister in Christ, they'd say, Christ is risen, and the other person would respond, He is risen indeed. Every day, every Sunday, is a celebration of the life that Jesus has given us because of His victory over death. That is the message he sends us out to deliver because the world needs it. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding guard our hearts and minds with Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we place ourselves into your hands that you may care for all of our needs of body and soul. As there are those within this world who are suffering, we ask that you provide them with comfort and peace. Be with all those who serve to protect others. We ask that you be with our leaders, that you may give them wisdom as they make decisions. We ask that those decisions be pleasing to you. Lord God, we ask that you protect those who are on the front lines of caring for those who are hurting. Uh, we ask that you be with doctors and medical staff, that you may protect them that you may give them the skills necessary to treat those who are hurt. Lord God, our trust is in you and you alone, knowing that there is nothing that is outside of your power and strength, that nothing in heaven on earth above or on earth below will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who has taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We ask that this Lenten season be one that gives you peace. We ask that you trust the Lord with all your heart and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.